systematic way for a counselor to get a client from a place of bitterness and anger to a place of healing and peace. What I'd like to do is lift up a few principles that you may be able to use in your own lives, particularly if you have been deeply hurt or are struggling with anger that just doesn't want to go away. I want to put forgiveness in the context of the scripture lesson from Mark that John just read. The Gospel of Mark is the shortest of the four Gospels. Mark gets right to the point in talking about who Jesus was and what he did. Chapter 1 sets us up to understand Jesus' authority as the Son of God. Mark says that Jesus taught with authority. He spoke with authority. He healed with authority. Healing is right there in the very first chapter of Mark. Jesus heals a man with an unclean spirit. Jesus heals Simon's mother-in-law. Jesus heals many who are sick or possessed by demons. Jesus heals a leper. Jesus' authority and power shines forth through his healing. This is a powerful motivator for me as a pastor who wants to become a better healer of minds and hearts. This is a wake-up call to the church. We are called church to be healers of the world. Our church is a healing station. Our church is in the business of healing people. That is one of our primary functions. How does Jesus heal? How does it? How is it that Jesus cast out demons? In many cases, by giving the gift of forgiveness. In the next chapter of Mark, chapter 2, there's a story of a man who's been paralyzed since birth. Jesus heals the man by saying to him, Son, your sins are forgiven. For Jesus, healing is often associated with forgiveness. Forgiveness is associated with healing. Healing can be a result of being forgiven. Healing, hear this, can be a result of forgiving others. Forgiveness, like healing, is a major theme seen throughout the Bible. The words forgive, forgiven, and forgiveness appear over 200 times. And there are many more indirect references. For example, from the psalm, Psalm 32, happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. From Psalm 130, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O oh Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. From the book of Hosea, fascinating story about how Hosea forgives his adulterous wife, symbolic of God forgiving the adulterous people of Israel. 14.4, I will heal their disloyalty. I will love them freely, for my anger has turned from them. And then finally, in Matthew chapter 18, Jesus raises the stakes for forgiveness. Peter approaches Jesus and asks, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. Some other versions of the Bible say 70 times seven. 
regardless of the translation, it's a mighty big number. I'm tempted to say, hello, David Cooney. One of your former pastors is uh, an airplane pilot, so. See you, Dave. Jesus calls us to forgive others. Yes, we should forgive others. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. However, for the time being, I want to de-emphasize the should of forgiveness. Of course, there is a place for shoulds. However, for now, I want you to think of forgiveness in an invitational way, more in terms of gift or healing. The shoulds cannot come until the power of the gift is recognized. Forgiving can be very, very, very hard. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hell yeah. When one has been wounded, betrayed, or violated repeatedly, particularly when one was young, forgiveness, hear this, may be the last place to begin. It is essential first to recognize the fullness of the evil that happened and to protect others from harm. Yes, what was done to me was evil. No, I did not deserve it. No, I should not place myself or those I love in a position of danger again. Yes, the one who harmed me should be preventing from hurting others in the same way. Just because I forgive someone does not mean that I pretend the evil never happened or could never happen again. Oh yes, forgiveness can be hard, but unforgiveness can be even harder. Stephen Hayes offers this illumination of uh, how forgiveness works. Imagine a giant fish hook being in unforgiveness is like being on a giant hook. Next to you on the hook is the person who hurts you. The hook is extremely painful. Wherever you go, so does the hook and so does the offender. The only way you can get off the hook is if you allow the offender off first. That's the kind of forgiveness I'm talking about. Allow the offender off the hook so that you two can get off and away from the pain. It is as essential to define what forgiveness is as well as what it is not. I want to read something to you. This is a definition of forgiveness that may not match up exactly with what you understand forgiveness to be. Nevertheless, hear me out. I'm going to read it through twice. People, on rationally determining that they have been unfairly treated, forgive when they willfully abandon resentment and related responses to which they have a right and endeavor to respond to the wrongdoer based on the moral principle of beneficence, which may include compassion, unconditional worth, generosity, and moral love, to which the wrongdoer by nature of the hurtful act or acts has no right. I want to read that again and see if you can hear yourself or those you care about in these words. People, on rationally determining that they have been unfairly treated, 
yes, clearly, I or you were not treated well. They forgive when they willfully abandon resentment and related responses. In other words, I let the anger go. But I have a right to it. I just don't choose to be angry anymore. I want to get off that fish hook and endeavor to respond to the wrongdoer based on the moral principle of beneficence, which may include compassion, unconditional worth, generosity, and moral love, as I said, to which the wrongdoer, by nature of the hurtful act or acts, has no right. It is a gift. not a requirement, it's a gift. Now here are a few things that they say forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not pardon, it's not legal mercy or leniency. Forgiveness is not condoning or excusing. Forgiveness is not Reconciliation, you can still come together again, but not forgive. Forgiveness is not justification. You can forgive, but you do not have to believe that the action done was fair. Forgiveness, for us humans, is not forgetting, because forgetting would leave you vulnerable to the same offense again or someone else. And forgiveness is not balancing the scales. Getting back at someone is not the same as forgiving. Now here's one. Forgiveness is not necessarily saying, I forgive you. You can forgive without using specific words. Saying, I forgive to your offender may put you in danger again. Sometimes you have to let the person go and forgive in your heart to get them off. Finally, forgiveness is not a quick fix. Forgiveness takes time, and the progress may fluctuate. So for this kind of forgiveness to work, certain conditions apply. The unfair treatment by another person must be real, and the victim must have been truly wronged. You cannot give someone else or yourself a timetable to forgive. You or the other person must be psychologically ready. You cannot require someone else to forgive. Come on, forgive me. Come on, forgive me. Forgive your brother. This is important. The victim does not have to tell the offender of their forgiveness. In some cases, that's even impossible. The offender may be long gone or even dead. Forgiveness works. Maybe not for everybody, at least not right away. But it can do an awful lot of good. Many people who have been hurt greatly by others in the past have found that forgiveness gives them a sense of peace they could not find anywhere else. Forgiveness allows a victim the opportunity to say, enough. I am tired of bearing this burden of being angry at another person. It's not helping them, and it's certainly not helping me. I release them. Let me conclude with this quote from Catherine Ponder. When you hold resentment toward another, you are bound to that person or condition by an emotional link that is stronger than steel. 
forgiveness is the only way to dissolve that link and get free. And one more from Oscar Wilde. Always forgive your enemies. Nothing annoys them as much. <laughs>